In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Hello and welcome. I'm Deacon Daniel from the Coptic Orthodox Diocese of London, and I'm here today to give you a brief introduction to the life, teachings, and significance of St. Matthew the Apostle and Evangelist. Now, St. Matthew the Apostle is, of course, one of the four Gospel writers. And it's through his Gospel that we understand much about the life and teachings of our Lord during his earthly ministry. And though this specific part of his life and his influence is known about, the depth and importance of his life, his writing style and also his influence are not often engaged in significantly to appreciate the wonderful example that he sets for us. So let's see what we know about him. Well, from the Gospels and wider church tradition, we know some details about the early life of St. Matthew. We know that he was born in Nazareth and lived in Capernaum, as we know that Christ, of course, traveled there when he met Levi, the tax collector. Now, that's another important point. We understand and know that he went by the name Levi before, of course, Christ gave him the name of Matthew. And we're told this in multiple Gospels, including Matthew's own Gospel, in which in chapter 9 we are told, as Jesus went on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him. And Matthew got up and followed him. Now, both in the context and in the wider Christian faith, this is important because at the time, tax collectors were social outcasts due to their association with the Roman occupation and their habit of stealing from others through taking more than was required for tax. So when he's called by Christ, it causes a stir among the Jewish community, seeing it as against ritual purity to associate with somebody like Levi. Therefore, Christ sharing a meal with him was seen as outright against this Jewish law, to which Christ, of course, reminds them that his mission is to call sinners to repentance. And let's face it, what kind of mission would it be if you were only really traveling with people who followed the law already? What is the point of preaching to the converted in this respect? However, this isn't all that we know about him. We know that he went on to become one of Jesus's greatest disciples, promising to give back fourfold what he took as a tax collector and also giving up his belongings as Christ had taught them to do. Now, following the ascension of Christ, he, with the other apostles, traveled far and wide in preaching the gospel. And it's noted that he traveled to Palestine, to Tyre, to Sidon, and also as far as Ethiopia, where we gain more details regarding his life and his mission. So what happened in Ethiopia? Well, whilst he was in Ethiopia, he was noted to have consecrated a bishop for a city. Now, the name of this city changes based on various traditions, but we know that there was a temple of Apollo there and that the people were convinced that idol worship was the way to express their faith in their gods. Through his teachings, St. Matthew turned them from idol worship and brought them into the Christian faith and the teachings of the gospel. Now this angered the governor, and upon hearing this, he was furious and ordered Matthew, the bishop, and all of the Christians to be burnt. However, when he tried this, he realized that they had been protected by God. And after witnessing this miracle and their enduring faith in the face of persecution, the governor himself was brought to Christ. Following this, he continued on his missionary journeys. Some traditions say that he went as far as India. Others say that he returned to Jerusalem. However, we know that he was eventually martyred. He was eventually stoned to death. And this is, of course, how he met his end. As with 11 of the apostles, Matthew was one of these apostles who was martyred. Specifically, where he was martyred is unknown to us. Some say Hierapolis, others say Ethiopia. 
However, we do know that his body was then returned by the bishop that he had consecrated in Ethiopia to Caesarea in Carthage, which is a different Caesarea to the one that we know from the Gospels. And even to this day, this is considered to be a sacred place. So why is he significant? Well, there's a number of reasons why. Firstly, his example, his change from being this selfish, arrogant person obsessed with riches and his complete conversion to life in Christ and humility and service to the point of death demonstrate this life of metonia, this life of the changing, the turning from sin to Christ. Of course, his other obvious contribution is his writing of the Gospel of Matthew, one of the four canonical Gospels. As I mentioned before, one of the ways in which we learn about and understand the teachings of Christ and the actions of Christ during his ministry. However, St. Matthew's Gospel is especially interesting. Since tradition from writers such as Eusebius tell us that it was originally written in Aramaic as opposed to the Greek. Now, this is significant because it's different to the other Gospels, both in the language that it's written and also the emphasis, since it's seemingly targeting a specifically Jewish audience. And this is something that we recognize if you follow through his writing style. Firstly, he assumes that the people who are reading have a knowledge of the Jewish faith, a knowledge of the geography of Palestine under the Romans, and also that they know these details about Jewish practice, something that your traditional Gentile um, Greek reader wouldn't understand, or something that if somebody was a convert, they wouldn't understand in that fullness the Jewish community would. It also gives a lot of details and specific references designed for allowing the Jewish community to recognize Christ as the Messiah, emphasizing that he is the fulfillment of the prophecies, that he is fitting the requirements of the Messiah that are found in Jewish scriptures. And this is one reason why Matthew's gospel and his influence as a writer is so vitally important, because he is a demonstration to us of someone who both lived that faith and taught it to those around him, bringing it to them, not just in a generic way, but in a way that they would understand and that they would appreciate and grow strongly in their faith from. Some examples of this include the fact that he began his gospel with the genealogy of Christ, with this emphasis that look who Jesus is, look how he relates to our community. And also, of course, this connection to the house of David, emphasizing his fulfillment of scripture. As well as this, he uses the discussions of Christ's actions with reference to Jewish law to demonstrate both his vast understanding of this law and this tradition, but also the relationship of Christ's words and Christ's actions to that. Again, drawing them in to this idea that Christ is the Messiah, that Christ has a place within their tradition rather than simply outside of it. In this way, of course, he emphasizes Christ's mission to the Jews, reminding them that this is not just a religion for everybody else, but it is for you specifically, emphasizing the Jewish aspect at a time, of course, when others such as St. Paul were writing more targeting for the Gentiles. He was there focusing on this Jewish community. So why does this make him so important to me? Why does this make him so significant? Well, this makes his gospel for one, a vital discussion of Christ both at that time. What was the message being given? And also for understanding the salvation it brought both to the Jews and to the Gentiles, as of course we hear from Simeon at the temple, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. But as well as this, Matthew's significant is his significance is found in his life. As I stated, he's an example of how to live your faith, but he's also an example of how to share it. 
an example that the message of Christ is universal and can be taught to people regardless of culture, regardless of language, and regardless of their level of understanding. And we pray that his intercessions are with us all. Amen. Oh,